This is the first small compact device from Ubiquiti that runs all the Unify OS applications and has a gateway built into it. But have they just killed off a part of their lineup? We will talk about this shortly. Hey everyone, my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. This has finally made its way to me and I can't wait to review it and take a look. So we're gonna jump inside the box first. You're probably wondering though, why do I say first compact product? Well, we have the cloud key, but that doesn't have a gateway built into it. And we have the UDR as well, but that only runs network plus two more products. So it doesn't give access to the full stack. We have the standard packaging that we've come to expect on all Ubiquiti products now with a pull tab at the top. So let's go ahead and open this. And inside we're greeted with the Cloud Gateway Max, which is right here. We have a USB plug on the side. We have an ethernet cable, which looks like actually an ether lightning patch cable. Uh, it looks like the clear one. So there's a 15 centimeter one there. And we'll probably have the UK plug in here. Also inside, we have the little Unify pack, which comes with a warranty and guide it's inside there, but we don't really need to take a look at that. Let's take a physical look at this. And it's the same size as the Cloud Gateway Ultra. And if we have a quick look, as I mentioned in a previous video, we have five two and a half gig ports on the back right here, one WAN, and it does have dual WAN capabilities that we will have a look at shortly. Around the side, if we take a look, we have the fit air vents along here to dissipate the heat that's gonna be built up inside here. And finally, the main thing is the NVMe slot. On the front, we have the 0.96 inch display that we've come to see on most devices as well around this kind of category. A couple of things to keep in mind, we have the 2.5 gig port on the back, but with IPS and IDS enabled, it only does 1.5 gigabytes. There's two little things I forgot to show you inside the box that are some rubber pads to pop at the bottom. And we have a opening tool which can basically slot into here and allow you to open up the SSD slot. This device does come in a couple of different variations. So there's a no storage option. There's a 512 gig version, a one terabyte version and a two terabyte version. So you can see this is a standard SSD inside here, popped open the SSD enclosure, and we can see it's a standard Kingston SSD inside. It's a PCI Express Gen 4. So nothing special about this drive. You can always obviously go ahead and open up the screw and pop another SSD drive in there. And it does have compatibility for other sizes as well in terms of SSDs. Now the question mark we have is in terms of the storage, the no storage option, it's $199. And if you were to add in a two terabyte drive, it would probably cost you approximately another $100, $150. So you're looking at $350 for a no storage version with a two terabyte drive. Whereas at the moment, if you were to buy the two terabyte drive off the shelf, it's 479. So let's quickly run back over the prices. So it's $199 for the no storage version, 512 gig is 279, one terabyte is 349 and two terabytes is 479. Now getting this set up is really easy and simple. We have the ports on the back. All we're gonna do is we're gonna plug one from our computer straight into port one, for example. And we have our internet line, which is coming from here. I'm gonna plug that into the one that has the globe on it. And that is our internet connection. Now everything's plugged in and we're on the computer. We're gonna go ahead and search for Unify. And that brings up the Cloud Gateway Max with the initial setup. I'm gonna run through this quite quickly just so I can get it configured and get logged in. If you wanna restore from a backup here, you can at this point, but I'm not going to. So I'm gonna continue without a backup and it's gonna quickly run a speed test for me. So let's see what sort of throughput I'm getting. I do have a gig down and 100 meg up. So 910, 920 meg seems about right. I am limited at a gigabit connection. There you go. So 932 down and 116 up. This is all set up now and we take a look straight on the screen. We have the network application installed. We have protect. Now for access, talk and connect, you need some sort of device plugged into the network. Now, because this is a quick review and unbox, so for now I can show you inner spaces installed and we can jump in there. We can go to protect and this loads nicely. This probably does take a couple of seconds longer than your Dream Machine Pro, for example, but generally scrolling around, I know there are no devices in here at the moment, but it seems relatively easy and it loads fairly quickly. Going across to Gateway, so there was a few different things on here that we wanted to take a look at. So the first one was going into the settings and we take a look at the networks. We can see we have the default VLAN on here. The internet was another one. So we have a primary and secondary WAN and we can set that up. You can set it up as port four if you want as the WAN port and you can choose that to either have that distributed or as a failover. I only have a gig connection here so I won't be able to test the throughput 
with IPS and IDS enabled. I can test it, but I'm only gonna get a gig. I won't be able to get to that one and a half gig throughput. The other features you have the standard VPN, the security. So this is where the intrusion prevention is. So we can go ahead and enable this to the high maximum settings that you want to. And that's really easy and simple. And we just click apply. So that will go off and do that right now. You have the full port forwarding and the firewall capabilities and the traffic routing as well. And for anybody that's curious, just to let you know, you can actually set up UID on this as well. So you can use it to link into your identities. Uh, if you wanna see a video on something like this, again, let me know down in the comments below. Now you have all the information about the Cloud Gateway Max, let's talk about some of the devices that they've killed off. Well, the first one is gonna be the Gateway Max. It's exactly the same model. It's the same specification. However, it includes one more gig of RAM, this model right here. For the same price on the no storage option, it's pretty much a no brainer that you're probably gonna go ahead and buy one of these to be able to run the full stack. Second is the Cloud Gateway Ultra. Now for an extra $60, you have an improvement in 1.5 gig IPS IDS. You have two and a half gig ports on the back. And again, you can run the full Unify OS stack. So it begs the question, are you really gonna go for the Gateway Ultra or are you gonna pick the Gateway Max? The next one I feel is a bit of a big one and this is the Cloud Key Gen 2. So you have everything that you have on the Cloud Key built in here. You have removable storage, which you can change if you buy the storage option. So it gives you a lot more flexibility when going ahead and using something like this. The only way I can see you ever needing to buy a Cloud Key Gen 2 again is if you want a cheaper Protect setup. The final one is the Gateway Lite. Again, a $60 difference between the two. So it begs the question, are you really gonna buy the Lite Gateway or you're gonna try and slightly future-proof yourself with the higher speeds? built on the Cloud Gateway Max. I'm sure there are other products that this is better value to buy than those products. So let me know down in the comments below which ones you think they are. Just a couple of other things I wanna cover before we conclude this video, and that is how hot this is running. So we've been running this for probably about an hour now, and the room is probably about early 20 degrees. So in terms of temperature of a room, it's reasonable. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we have a thermal tester just here. Now again, there's nothing that's really going across this network. We're not pushing it to the max. So we're just getting a base reading out of this. I'll probably cover this more when I do more in-depth testing of this. Again, if there's something you wanna see, let me know down in the comments below. So we're looking right here. So we're in the middle of the thing, which is 37 degrees, 38 degrees, and we're going along the edges. Yeah, so the, the hottest is on the top side. Oh, there we go, we're pushed to 39 degrees as well. I can't feel much heat coming out of the sides just here. I can feel it is warm but I can't feel the heat coming out on the sides. So let's take a look at what this is. So we're going along the edges, we're about 45 degrees, 46, and if we go ahead towards the middle, so something like this does run warm and it is warm to touch, but it's not getting to the temperatures where it's gonna catch fire or have any issues. The other thing is the add-ons that you probably need when you buy the switch. Now, a lot of people are saying, go ahead and get yourself an eight port switch so you can have PoE on it. But keep in mind that you are able to buy PoE adapters. So if you're putting in one of these with one access point and possibly two cameras, you can go ahead and do this with PoE adapters. Which one works out cheaper? I'll let you work that out on the Unify website. What are my overall thoughts of this? It's great for a small deployment, whether it's a small office, home office, whatever you wanna do, if you're doing less than 30 devices, a few cameras, a few access points, this could be the one for you. Maybe even a doorbell can be added to this as well. I like the IPS and IDS feature in here and it does go up to one and a half gig. It would have been good if they went and did the full two and a half gig, but I'm guessing they would have needed more processing power and more heat dissipation, which they don't have on here. And the final bit is, it's great for someone who wants to get started in the Unify ecosystem. This runs the full stack, you can add in a couple of devices and you're good to play around with this altogether. The one thing I wish they added in, and I know this obviously has a big impact on the design, is PoE ports on the back. It just, I think, would have made it the perfect gateway to keep out there. It would have had PoE power, it would have run the full stack. You could have had one of these with a couple of access points or a couple of cameras, and you would have been good to go. Well, I wanna know your thoughts down in the comments below. I think I've said that enough in this video, but let me know your thoughts down below. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.